This video is brought to you by my T Public page. That's right, I'm advertising myself now because I figured why not. Released in 2006, written by Greg Pack, with art by Carlo. Oh boy. Pag. <laughs> Paguel, Pag Paguleian, 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 Carlo Paguleian, and Aaron Lopres, Lopresti. This is Planet Hulk. Doctor Banner, belted by Gamma Rays, turns into the Hulk. And before I get started, make sure to like this video because it really helps me out or something. I don't know, that's just what people on other videos that I watch say, so I'm saying it also. Planet Hulk is a storyline from 2006 that asked the question, why don't we just send the Hulk into space? Our story began in a three-issue arc of the Fantastic Four involving the Hulk going on a rampage in Las Vegas, continued in a one-shot of Marvel's Illuminati made up of Iron Man, Doctor Strange, Reed Richards, Charles Xavier, Black Bolt, and Namor. They decided that they had just had enough and Hulk needed to be sent far, far away to a nice, relaxing, uninhabited planet where he can live and not hurt anything. Unfortunately, his ship flew past a wormhole, and he came out in a very much inhabited planet called Sakaar. Suddenly, these weird ins- suddenly, these weird insectoid tribesmen all appear at the crash site, and one of the bugs shoots the Hulk and... HE BLEEDS! Which really pisses him off. They fight, and then these redskin natives show- Wait a minute. I mean, these Roman-esque soldiers who just happen to have a reddish-pink skin tone appear and shoot the Hulk with this little dart thing. The aliens start speaking their alien language, and quickly it is translated to English, and one of them is like, Hear ye, hear ye. I'm the governor. I also have an order to claim anything that comes out of that giant portal in the sky. And that cool spaceship and green man came out of the portal, so you little bugs can fuck off. And the bugs are like, hey, finders keepers. Then Hulk tosses the ship at the army men and jumps to attack, but he is shot by another little dart and crashes to the ground. Later, he awakens as a chained up slave in the busy streets of Crown City. Hulk freaks out and tries to break free, but finds that he isn't strong enough. Then he's brought to... A gladiatorial arena! At the fight, the Crimson King, sorry, I meant the Red King, sits over his people watching the fighting. Then, this giant tentacle monster called the Cavaranthus Caver Mesaurus, sounded out, phonetics, or the Great Devil Corker, erupts from beneath the arena floor and just starts killing gladiators. Hulk does a Nigel Thornberry impression and leaps inside the corker's mouth and then explodes out of its gullet. And the Red King's like, nice. A little bug man named Maik, who you may recognize from Thor Ragnarok. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Korg. I'm kind of like the leader in here. I'm made of rocks, as you can see, but don't let that intimidate you. You don't need to be afraid unless you're made of scissors. <laughs> Just a little rock, paper, scissor joke for you. This is my very good friend over here, Meek. He's an insect and has nice four hands. Maik rocks up to Hulk, and Hulk threatens to squash him like a grape. Maik points the Red King out to Hulk, and Hulk tries to attack him, but he's shot by this hot alien woman in skimpy armor. Then Red King appears before the Hulk in this like big mechanical suit of armor, and he's like, Yo, I could have pardoned you, man, but you dissed me and tried to kizzle me. Now I'm gonna kick your ass. Red King drops a shield and sword onto the ground, and then he and the Hulk duke it out. Hulk slashes the Red King in the face, and he freaks out as Hulk prepares to strike the final blow. But when the hot gray alien woman stops him, she prepares to fight the Hulk, but then Hulk is electrocuted. Oh, fuck. But then Hulk is electrocuted by, by the Red King's crony. The Red King then celebrates his victory and orders the Hulk to be sent 
to the maw. Cut to the maw. A giant volcano magma monster thing that's used to train gladiators, I guess. Hulk fights off the lava monster as Imperial soldiers rock up and order him around. Primus Vand instructs the slaves that they are going to have that they're going to put on a little test. So he gets two different groups of slaves and orders them all to fight each other to the death. Whoever remains standing wins. Maik tries to form a battle plan and Hulk's like, "Get away from me!" Then they all break into battle. Hulk fights a Cronin who kindly says that they can work together, but Hulk ain't having it as Maik fights a two-handed man. Then one of the fighters is stabbed through the chest. The other gladiators stop in their tracks and look on in horror as a brood swarm swoop in and begin attacking and devouring the slaves. As the remaining survivors battle, Band orders everyone to stop. The seven survivors stand sur stand surviving, including one of the brood. Van says that they are now a team, and that they better prepare themselves for tomorrow, because it's going to get a lot worse. Later that night, in their communal cell, Maik and the brood argue until Korg puts a stop to it. Yeah, that's Korg. He might look a little different. He's a lot oranger than he is in the movie. He tells them to knock it the heck off and asks everyone to <laughs> introduce themselves. Maik introduces himself, followed by Brood, the unbound shadow, Hirohim, doesn't say anything because he's bound to no one or something, Captain Levine Ski of the Imperial Guard, and Eloe, who isn't good at fighting. I guess she's like a political prisoner or something. Hulk says it's a bunch of BS because they have to fight as a team, but like, hey, what happens when they have to kill each other, man? The next day at the Maw, Korg and Hulk stand before the lava pool as large forms make their way out of the magma. Korg is horrified. The forms are his brother and another Cronin. Captain Levine says that his brother is long gone as the fighters discover that the Cronin's magma-infused bodies are just too hard to, like, break or something. So, what does Hulk do? Well, he grabs Korg and uses him as a baseball bat to smash his brother and other Cronin to death. Later, Hulk and some friends get, like, these cool kind of matching suits of gladiator armor, and Korg is still horrified after having been used as a weapon to kill his own brother. The gladiators are taken to the outskirts of the Sakaar Empire to a small village being terrorized by Wildebots, or Wild Bots. I don't know, they're these cool-looking robots. That's all you need to know. Also, this is like a televised event or something, because people are watching it on TV. Maybe it's pay-per-view. Hulk and the Gladiators, my favorite heavy metal band, make easy work of the bots and are treated to a massive feast on an Imperial pleasure cruiser. Then Levine is chosen for... sex with these concubines that look like teenagers or just very petite alien women. Also located on the cruiser is the warbound Shadow from earlier. And at the Red King's castle, an advisor informs him of the Wildebot problem, and Red King says that it may be time for the spikes. Then the pleasure cruiser is attacked by rebels who have come to free Green Scar. Then Imperial Death's heads crash into the cruiser. No, not that Death's head, or that one. It's these ones! Hulk says he's going to finish his dinner while these dummies fight each other, and Eloy says that the rebels need them, but Hulk's like, Nah. And then a death's head captures the lady, I think it's LOA or someone, and she gets taken away. Then the captain comes back with his concubine and asks why the gang turned into a sausage party all of a sudden. Later the gladiators talk about what's her name and the Red King. Then Eyepatch says that they have a big show to put on tomorrow and orders everyone to get some sleep. Hulk enters his bedroom to find... The Shadow Woman. She lunges her blade at Hulk, but Hulk catches her wrist, and it's kind of clearly alluded to that Hulk is getting stronger and faster now that his body is, I guess, becoming acclimatized and adjusted to a Sakaar or something, and Shadow Lady says that she's here to buy him. Hulk declines and goes to spend some time with the concubines. Later at the Grand Arena, the Emperor makes an announcement that any slaves that survive three rounds will become citizens of the Empire and get a pretty sweet endorsement deal from all these sword and shield manufacturers like NASCAR or something. Then, from high above the arena, 
An Imperial Dreadnought appears, and it drops a big old bomb. Hulk leaps into the air and catches it. Then it blows up. Korg and the others stand in the dust, and then more Death's Head troops arrive. Then Hulk appears and he, he rips them all apart. Hulk screams into the air as he has spears shot through his body, and the audience, they're loving this shit. They are cheering like crazy. Someone's made a little foam finger already out of, like, for the Hulk. Another person has those Hulk fist gloves, you know, the ones I'm talking about. Those, like, big ones with, like, the handles on the inside that he used to punch people with, even though the commercials say you're not supposed to do that, but you do it anyway. Later that night, the gladiators all sit around in their cell and everyone gives their backstories. Then Maik brings everyone together by something called chemine, I think. It's something his species can do. And they all decide to become warbound. Also, uh, Levin died or something. I don't remember. The next day, this gong that is able to be heard throughout the whole city sounds off and the people prepare to watch the gladiatorial combat. The warbound are met by raucous applause and fanfare, and then a doorway slides open from the other side of the arena, and the Hulk is shocked by what he sees. The Silver Surfer stands- oh wait, hold on. I mean, the Silver Savage stands before the arena. Hulk calls out to the surfer, and he kind of recognizes the Hulk, but then he slams the Hulk with his mace and fights the warbound, and Korg is naked again for some reason. The Hulk then punches the surfer so hard that his slave disc thing is smashed, and Silver Surfer looks up to the Hulk, smiles, and says, I'm free. Thank you. <laughs> Then Korg runs up and he's like, Oh jeez, man. He's, he's, he's already dead. Look at him. He's all cracked and broken and, like, driven into the ground. Then Korg calls out for their freedom. Then the Shadow brings out three hooded figures and orders the gladiators to kill them or them to kill the gladiators. I wrote this weirdly. I wrote the script oddly, I'm not sure who says what. But the gladiators use a loophole to not fight, so then Eye Patch electrocutes everyone, and someone's hand blows up, and every single obedience disc is destroyed. It's revealed that the Silver Surfer regained his power cosmic and used it to destroy every single one of the discs. And Hulk's like, Let's tear this mother down. Then they tear this mother down. All the people in the arena escape into the wilderness, and the Surfer and the Hulk then speak to each other. Surfer invites Hulk to come with him, but Hulk says that he's where he belongs. So Surfer pieces out. And later, an Imperial spy radios into the Empire about the escaped citizen's encampment, and the Shadow Lady orders a bombardment to begin. The spy freaks out and runs away in an attempt to escape, but ends up right in front of Korg and Hulk. And Hulk asks why he's running. No one else is here but them. Then the bomb drops, and the man tears up before he is completely incinerated. Next morning, Shadow Lady and her troops look over the single corpse of their spy in a charred forest. Then they hear blangs and gunshots in the distance and run off to find it. She finds Eye Patch just shooting some villagers for the hell of it in order to set up a trap for Green Scar and his buddies. And meanwhile, Green Scar and his buddies watch the Imperials preparing for an attack. Then uh, Tattoo Guy, fucking what's his name, Hiro Hirohim or something like that, stops and points out how obvious of a trap this is. And then at like some agrarian society, Imperial soldiers interrogate farmers about the whereabouts of Green Scar and his comrades, when all of a sudden, Wildabots emerge out of the water and start killing everybody. And the soldiers are like, okay, bye, we gotta go. The Wildabots rampage towards the city as the local militia prepare to stand off against them. But then the Warbound appear and fight off the, uh, the, 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 the robots. The Warbound Chow's later, the Warbound Chow down, as the city leader discusses what should be done next. And meanwhile, Maik sneaks away. He finds nearby some rubble in the dirt. Brood walks, or, well, slithers, I guess, up behind him and says that she can sense 
Maik's hive. Then Maik sends a vision of his life to the other warbound. Maik's tribe came into conflict with the Empire, and Maik was the only survivor. Then he was captured and sold into slavery. Brood explains that he Kim bonded with them, and Maik asks them to help him get justice. Then Maik goes to the leader of the city and calls him out for killing his family. And the leader invokes the Imperial Law of Trial by Arms in 12 hours. Maik and the headman of the city meet up in a circle of fighting or something. And Maik immediately gets disarmed, and then he sweep kicks the headman and prepares to slice his throat when he starts screaming in pain. And suddenly Hulk's like, Wait a minute, there's screaming coming from under the ground. And the headman's like, hey, 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 don't look over there, there's nothing to see over there. But the Hulk rips up the earth to discover Maik's hivelings. The warbound stare at the headman and he's like, gulp. Later, the Empire finds the smoking rubble of the city. And they find the headman, partially naked and sitting on some rocks. Then he makes a deep remark about how people are the real monsters. At the Maw, the Warbound attacks and then frees gladiatorial slaves and this giant monster thing. The Sakaar Liberation Front makes their way into the Steps, which is this place I guess the Emperor won't follow them or something. The Warbound launches an ambush against the Empire in this little valley, and once the Empire surrenders, Maik leads his people on a murdering spree. And Hulk does his signature thunderclap to make him stop. The next day, Hulk and his troops get a transmission from Crown City about the riots being held in Hulk's name. And Hulk tells them to just go fight and says that he wants to be alone now. But Maik says that he's not going away. And Maik is also revealed to have grown into a big, thick bug boy. <laughs> I hate that sentence. I don't like that I wrote it. Hulk orders him to move out of his way, but Maik does not stand down. Maik says that they need Hulk to kill the Red King. Maik says that they are warbound, and Hulk throws Maik away. Maik's hive attack Hulk, and he squishes some bugs, then Maik attacks him. As Hulk is about to kill Maik, Korg leaps in the way. Hulk comes out of his rage, and Korg says that Hulk needs to stop, and Maik says, <laughs> How can I be stopping what he made for doing? The Warbounds speak about what happens next. They discuss the Spike Wars and the now barren steps. Then they discuss Hulk, and LOA says that he won't be happy with making a family or farming or anything. No, he can only go to war. So Hulk gives in to his typecast and leads the charge of war, and in a giant field, they face off against the Emperor's Shadow and the Empire. Shadow says that the King demands Hulk's head, and he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm coming for his too. Shadow Lady gives Hulk her little backstory about how she has old strength or old something, old shadow strength, whatever it is. And she was like trained to be like this perfect fighter or whatever. But then the spikes attacked and infected her whole village. So she fought against them until the Empire came and the Red King showed up who was, at, like, I guess the Red Prince then, because he was a little boy. Anyway, they took her as a slave, installed an obedience chip in her, and she's been his bodyguard ever since. Then she tells Hulk that the Red King knew the spikes were coming to her village, and he let them all die, just to get her. And if he'd do that, imagine the millions he'd kill to get Hulk. Then she challenges him to a one-on-one -on -one combat. She stabs him, and her fucking blade just snaps off in his chest. They fight, and then Shadow Lady uses her ancient power of the old strong to crack a coom Hulk in the chest, causing a shockwave to wash across the entire battlefield. The two lie on opposite ends of the crater that just formed, and Shadow Lady uh, says that Hulk should be dead after that. And as they prepare to continue the fight, the Red King orders a massive obsidian ship to crash from the sky right in the middle of the field. Then thousands and thousands of spikes escape out of the ship and begin infecting people, kind of like the Flood from the Halo franchise. Hulk and Shadow Lady stand before the spikes, and then she stabs him in the foot, and Hulk gets pissed and launches her into the air, and she's like, Haha, you fell for it, see ya! Hulk faces off against a spike, which can apparently morph their bodies and have acid saliva or something, 
But then he gets infected. So he grabs the blade, stabbed into his foot, cuts open his chest, and rips the spike out of his body. The spike then turns into this gross giant flesh monster or something, and Hulk smashes a hole into the ground. Shadow Lady, aka Kyera, lands outside of an Imperial City and warns everyone to get inside and board up their homes. Then Red King's hologram flies up and he's like, Yo! Hey! Hey! My, uh, my shadow lady. What are you doing? I, I, I explicitly told you to go get the green scar. What are you, what are you doing here? Why are you bothering with these schmucks? She tells him that the spikes have attacked, and the Red King tells her that he has a bomber on its way, and not to worry. The bomber arrives, and starts, well, bombing the area. Only it doesn't bomb the spikes. It just bombs a giant wall of fire around the Hulk, trapping him and the entire village in with the spikes. The villagers in Warbound barricade themselves inside the little hamlet and attempt to hold off the horde. And meanwhile, inside the village walls, Maik and his fellows sense something coming off- sense something coming from an off-limits facility building. They barge through the doors and find... A QUEEN! Why do all of- every single fucking place they visited has been doing something terrible to these poor bugs? Maik and the bugs free the queen from her imprisonment as Maik threatens to kill all the villagers. Maik tells the warbound about what the village did to her as a spike slithers up and over the undefended wall and then... It stabs itself into the last queen. Hulk rips the spike out of her as a pleasure cruiser shoutcasts this for the TV audience. The queen is saved as Korg and Hirohim show up on these like little floating platform things. The civilians and the queen are loaded up on the platforms to be evacuated. And the Red King's hologram shows up behind Shadow Lady as she helps the remaining people evacuate and says, Ugh, look, I know you ain't shit against the Green Scar, uh, which is why I called up- Look, I know- you ain't gonna do shit against Green Scar. That's why I called up my spike homies. But now you know, and these fools are getting in the way. See ya! Then the bombs drop right in the center of the town. Hulk, LOA, and Korg look down from their little flying platforms in horror. Then, from ground zero, Kyera emerges from the smoke, carrying the child. As she escapes from the flame and smoke, the child's charred corpse withers away and collapses into dust. The Hulk reaches a hand down to her, and she climbs up to their platform. Kyra says that she'll fight by their side until they are all dead, or she has split the Red King from the groin. And Hulk's like, Works for me. Then Hulk stares down the pleasure cruiser and cries out, Come here, you stupid pinkies! You tried to kill us with swords and spears! You tried to kill us with bombs! You tried to kill us with your stupid spikes! Please tell me you're getting this. Oh yeah, don't worry, the whole world is getting this. That's a very Earth-looking camera, don't you think? Oh, that just made us mad! So get ready, Red King! Now we're coming for you. Bring it on, you basic bitch. Sometime later, the rebels hide out in their mountain hideout as Brood gives a puppet show for of the history of the Green Scar to some children. Kyra says that the Empire is bombing the spikes in their direction and that they need to keep moving. Mike says that they can't move the Queen now. She's finally started to properly heal. Then the Empire attacks. Because I guess they really weren't that far away. Kyra stands before a legion of Imperial forces corralling the spikes closer and closer and says that they are not the Empire's enemies. The spikes are. But the Imperial forces don't care what she says and drive the spikes forward so Hulk breaks the mountain. Yep, he literally smashes a mountain apart until lava fills the canyon, allowing everyone to escape. An hour later, Hulk and the Warbound are alerted that three more spike ships have landed to the north, east, and west and the Empire is driving them through the forests and villages to build their strength. Basically, just funneling them through any place that's populated to get more spikes. It's really fucked up. Hulk says that the refugees are safe now, so he's going to go stop this. Then the last queen falls to the spike infection, and Maik is forced to incinerate her. Hiroim tells Kyera that they need to go to the Shadow Elders for help, and that they will listen, because they have the Hulk. They have... 
the Sakar son. One of the bugs says that Hulk isn't the Sakar son, Maik is the Sakar son, and the World Breaker. And Maik's like, No, little bro, Maik is not the Sakar son. Just Maik. Then he says that they will lead the spikes away, and Maik loads up his hive and they take off. The old strong lead the travelers through the desert, and as they hide under tarps during a sandstorm, an old man tells the tale, On the first day came fire. On the second day, win. I don't know what that means. It's some prophecy that has to do with the World Breaker or the Sakar Sun or whatever. Doesn't really matter. Because suddenly, rumbling comes from the ground, and Hulk walks outside to find... Whatever this is. Hulk gets ready to fight the monsters, and then one of the old strong is like, Hey, wait, 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 we came here to find you. Then the Shadow Elders appear and teleport everyone to... An ancient vessel that brought the Shadow People to Sakar. We only have we only have traces of the old power in our blood. Sometimes not enough. So we fired up the ancient engines and we created the great portal. It brought the Death's Head guards who fought back the first spike invasion. It brought the Silver Surfer who freed the slaves. And finally, it brought you, because we believe the old stories, the Sakar Sun will come to all the people of this planet to save us and unite us. The prophet tells us the Sakar Sun lies within each of us, but you chose to look outward, scouring the universe for a savior of flesh and blood. Now you have found him, and you must obey when he calls. Not so fast. Your friend has not passed the test. Test? I don't think so. You a pussy? I ain't no pussy! So to prove his masculinity, Hulk prepares for the test. Then he gets a vision of the Illuminati. So you think you're one of us now? A hero sent to save the world? Who did you love, Bruce? Betty? Harelia? Jim Wilson? How many are still alive? This will end as it always does. You'll kill them all, monster. The Elder asks the Hulk how he can unite the world when his heart is full of hate, and he says that he is not the Sakaar son. Hulk's like, whatever. Then he walks over and lifts the entire ship with one hand. Elsewhere, Korg and Maik lead the charge against whoever they went off to fight when the Red King's Imperial ships appear overhead. Then one of them blows up, and the Shadow People's ship appears. The Red King's fleet fires space torpedoes at them, but Kyera and Hulk somehow manage to fight those off. Then they fire an EMP, dropping the Imperial ships from the sky. Cut to... Crown City, bitch. Crown, Crown City, bitch. The Red King gets suited up as the Rebels EMP the city. The cadre lands outside beyond a giant wall of fire and make their way through it to find... Spikes! Lots and lots of spikes. So many spikes, it's like a punk rocker's head. Then Brood and Maik fly over and say that the spikes are chemming with them and that they're calling for the Hulk. Then they walk into the Spikes ship and find... Whatever this is, I don't know what's going on here, but it's something. Korg asks what they are, and Maik says that they are the Father Spikes. Then Maik translates their chemin to the other warbound. You know us as the Spikes, killing spores that consume any organic material they touch. But that is not who we truly are. In our natural form, we live in open space. Absorbing cosmic energies from dying stars. Every few generations, we migrate, moving to new galaxies in our ancient ships. We meant to pass this world on our way to your star. But something went wrong. Our ships crashed on the surface of the planet. Stranded on the ground, Starved of cosmic energy. We lost our minds and souls. We went insane. Hungry. So hungry. We consumed everything we touched. 
when nothing could satisfy us. We killed millions, but finally, the Father Emperor's robots beat us back, loaded us onto our few remaining ships, and launched us into the skies. But instead of returning us to the stars, our ships landed. Meanwhile, topside, Hirohim and Eloe fight the Imperials alongside the Rebels until the Red King appears. But then, the Hulk appears with an army of spikes. Then Red King and Hulk fight, and then they fight, and then Red King shoots some rockets, but Hulk dodges them and throws Red King, and they fight some more, until Red King's armor begins to break. Okay... I'll give you one last chance to kneel before me, Holmeslice, cause you're pissing me off, ya dig? If you don't, I'll have to kill everyone. You're dead. Nope, pretty sure you are. Then the Red King cracks the planet's tectonic plates, and the Hulk then leaps into the bubbling, erupting magma and just starts diving down. The Hulk somehow shifts the tectonic plates back into place and he emerges from the magma perfectly fine. Then he clocks the ever-loving shit out of the Red King, sending him flying over the city walls where he somehow manages to stand up when he's stabbed through the chest by Wildabots and promptly destroyed. Hulk stands before the people as they all chant Green Scar. The slaves are freed, food and supplies are given out, a parade is held and celebrations are had, and Hulk allows the Spike Fathers to feed upon him to keep the spike hordes under control. One day into his rule, Hulk accidentally transforms back into Banner as the spikes feed upon him. Then they leave and Hulk reforms and he goes and has some breakfast. Later, Hulk asks Kyera to marry him and they conduct the shadow ceremony. And then she says that Hulk must show her all of him. And Hulk slowly transforms back into Bruce Banner. I'm Bruce. You asked, so, uh, Hulk let me out. You wanted to see him. All of him. All of us. All of me. Then they kiss and they bang and then overlook their new kingdom. Elsewhere, Maik talks to Brood about how everyone has forgotten how Hulk was supposed to be angry and smashing and revenging. And Brood's like, Why don't you calm down? Maybe it's time to forget. Then they start to bang and make out. <laughs> but Brood accidentally pushes a button that begins the recorded Illuminati message. I have always thought of you as, uh, as friends, Bruce. So I am truly genuine. Those are but his friends. For your sake and ours, we are sending ah, you away. It's now the only he'll way we remember. Can be sure. I know you must hate us, Bruce. Hulk and Kyera sleep in bed when Hulk gets this telepathic message from Maik to come downstairs. Hulk finds Maik and some scientists looking over the recording. Hulk watches it in anger and smashes the telescreen. Then he storms off and Kyera later awakens as Hulk carries her through the very outskirts of civilization and asks if they should just leave all that behind and go to a place of peace, a place where they'll never have to fight again. She kisses him and says that she'll go wherever he wants but says that he need not fear himself. Hulk says he knows what he is, but Kyera says that he is not the World Breaker. They fought for this land, he bled here, and now, 
Now there is life. There is growth where there was once death. She tells Hulk that this is where he belongs, with his people, with his queen, with his child. And Hulk's like, You told me you were on the bill! So the Green King goes about rebuilding the destruction caused by the Red King and sees to it that the spikes are freed to the cosmos. In space, Hulk frees the spikes that were stuck on the moon, and with that, they are freed. Hulk and Kyera return to Crown City as the people cheer for him. They walk through the city center, and Hulk finds a large group of children who have made this, like, life-size Hulk paper mache thing that they set atop the newly displayed, uh, I guess, museum piece that is his, uh, the space capsule that he came to Sakaar on. Time and time again, your anger and power have threatened warp the entire Hello. planet. Warning. It's the only warp way warp we can be sure of my I'm Stupid duty humans! Truly, genuinely. Ah! Everybody get down! said I was the Sakaar son. Come to save them and unite them. But I was the world breaker all along. I just didn't know you were too. Stupid humans. With your stupid son. Can't you do anything right? I want to die. I want to burn to nothing. But with your bomb. You just made me stronger. The strongest one there is. The only one there is. Give them back! Give them back! Give, give Hulk back. Above Hulk, a massive ship appears and the Warbounds step out and go to their king. Hulk tells them that this is the end. There's nothing left to save, nothing left to smash. LOA says that their robot friend has a map of the whole universe in his brain. And Brood asks if there's any place in particular Hulk would like to go. This is the story of the Green Scar. The Eye of Anger. The World Breaker. Har. Hulk, Hulk, and how he finally came home. To be continued in World War Hulk, the end. I hope you enjoyed this episode of What Is. If you did, leave a like and subscribe for more videos just like this. I also have a little gaming series coming out to celebrate the final season of Star Wars The Clone Wars, so make sure you check that out, and my Batman Arkham City playthrough, and of course, my podcast, The Cruising Altitude Podcast, a podcast dedicated entirely to Tom Cruise. And I also would like to thank the Codeine Cowboy for being my patron on Patreon. I'll see you next time. Bye.